Kyle here from All Media Reviews. Um, I'm this this video today on what, December fifth, twenty twenty three. I'm putting on hold. Uh, it's kind of an announcement, celebration, review kind of thing. It's a hodgepodge, but the albums of the year series for another week or two because I'm trying to focus on the the albums of the year of this year because it's like we just had all these albums that came out on Friday. There were actually a total of five releases. One being um, the Peter Gabriel album, I Slash O, of course. Another big one was the Giant Sky album. Um, but Code 7 and um, Toe Hider put out another EP, the fifth EP, and um, this Project Harp from um, former singer of Midlake, uh, Tim Smith. There's like Tim Smith, then there's the Tim Smith from formerly a Jellyfish, and then I think there was... Tim Smith with Cardiacs, it's interesting. There was also like a running back with the Redskins in the, the like late 80s, early 90s named Timmy Smith. There's, there's probably a, like 386 Tim Smiths in the world. So, so all right, let's just get the, the vinyl update out of the way first. So I didn't even do a Record Store Day, a Record Store Day story, but um, unfortunately on Record Store Day, I brought, we bring my wife's car in to get serviced. Um, turned out to be nothing thankfully unfortunately i end up getting i went to record record store after going to one other store we had to go to the drug store but my car was parked and another car hit it and um, got damaged to the front of my car my car is still drivable thankfully but um so i didn't uh, record store day 2023 or black friday record store day rather record store day is not until is in april but black friday record store day a few weeks ago was kind of basically marred by that incident unfortunately we did go to a Garter Records and find I only bought a couple of records when we were just thinking about, you know, you're getting your wife's car serviced and bought a lot of records recently. So I did buy two though. I bought uh Sufjan Stevens is an album that I have um meant to buy and you know it's like Sufjan, the Decembers and Muse, a couple others. You know, they're commercially successful artists, but you know, and I, I like specific records from and I'm getting pretty close to getting all the ones I need from the Illinois record from two thousand five. It's Great record. It has Chicago, of course, most well known, but it has a bunch of other really just excellent sort of chamber folk uh, tracks on it. Um, standard black, got the uh, like Illinois state mascot. It looks like a, an eagle, though. <laughs> yeah, because of course, it, Sufjan Stevens in the early to the mid 2000s was started the States Project, and he did Michigan first, and then he did Illinois. He's from Michigan. I don't know if he has ties to Illinois, but, um, and then he just kind of was done. He put out an album, of course, this year, which will be on my 2023 list, very likely. Uh, I know Rate Your Music loves it. It's been, like, the number one record on there for a while on their charts um, for the better part of, um, you know, whatever, how many months it's been out. It's been about, about, about two months. It came, it came out in September, I think, Javelin, but... Um, yeah, no, Illinois is, it's not my favorite Sufjan Stevens album. This record's big, big gatefold. But um, it was the record that kind of got him more wide acclaim, and it, it's it's always been a record that people like. Even though it's really, it is long, and it has, I don't know how many, jeez, oh, this is a case that's ready to be damaged. If, interesting. <laughs> And I never got to see him, of course. I told that story about I drove around looking for a parking spot many years ago when on the Age of Odds tour. But, you know, I mean, my other favorites, Casimir Pulaski Day, John Wayne Gacy Jr. It's interesting, of course, about that that guy. Um, there's a few others. There's there's a lot of moments on here with the piano and the dynamics and some of the instrumentation that totally work. Cheryl Warden's on this. You know, she's thanked in the credits. Um, but anyway, of course, it looks like, you know... What was he like? The was he the sixteenth president? I can't remember. Yeah, something like that. Number sixteen, you know, the great the great Abe drawn in here. But um, I know one of the songs references Decatur. And I always think of the when Cameron and Ferris Bueller's Day Off mentions he, she went to Decatur. Decatur. Um, so the other one I picked up on at the Gardon Records today was the new Stephen Wilson, the Harmony Codex. Another record that, like Javelin from Sufi on Stevens, will very likely be, will be on my list. Obviously, I bought the record. A record I like. I'm 
I'm not saying I'm in love with, but I like it enough. It has a lot to like. It's it's kind of, um, you know, very clean and perfectionistic, but um, that, that song Economies of Scale, I always get just like these dreamy, sad, melancholy moments from. Um, I know someone did a remix of it, like the labels of the app. This is Standard Black. I, I know there's probably some other versions. But, um, of course, this... There's a Dolby Atmos and everything for this that I don't have. I don't have the setup for that anyway. Someday, maybe. But, um, yeah, no, Stephen Wilson's... I mean, I never picked up Future Bites, which I could. I, I, don't, I like Future Bites, but I'd say I'd probably like this album a hair more. Not dramatically more, because I, you know, I like that record. So those are the only two things I got on record store day. But, um... So then I, I ordered this a few months ago, and this was almost just based on to support and the belief that more could come out. This is the record Silver City from Falling Up. You know, Jesse Rabordi of the River Empires, um, and of course this band, also the, um, uh, the Gloom Catcher, solo, he's done soundtrack work. Um, but uh, this is Silver City, which is, it's actually like a Christmas seat, Christmas album, but the interpretations of some of the songs are are not. And I, I have a, a video I made on the River Empires a few years ago, and it was, it was just a few months ago, before this went for sale, that someone asked me if I was a fan of this. And I remember listening to this maybe once, because Falling Up and Jesse, Falling, Falling Up put out, I want to say probably like four records in the span of like three years. Put out a couple, two different, they're, they're conceptual pieces, uh, a lot of them. And the, like... There's a couple of Midnight on Earthship and then um, Death, Sparkling Death Cometh, that one especially. I like them a lot. I like more, at least from memory, than this. But at the same time, you know, it's a longer record, so it was twice. It was almost twice as much money. So, but, I mean, yeah, it wasn't as pricey. I, I The fact that Falling Up is issuing vinyl, the self-title I like from a few years ago, um... The Casey Crescenzo produced Fangs, that would be my first choice. If I'm hoping that some of his other titles will by supporting buying one of the records. So I, know, I know the Fallen Up fan base, they just went apeshit over this and they just, they bought all of them. So I think three or four of them came out. This one, I think those other two, uh, Midnight Ownership, and there may have been one other one, but even came with a postcard type thing with a message from Jesse. Talking about, you know, you know just remember that we love you, etc. Et so, um... I want to say, though, so I haven't even mentioned it, I'm already like 10 minutes in this video, I just hit 300 subscribers, and thank you to Dean Wolf and all the, 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 the guys on the prog stream with Prog Corner um, talking about Rush on Sunday, that was a lot of fun, you know, Rush is, you know, a personal band to me, you know, just like a lot, many people, they, they mean a lot to me, they have and they always will, um, and I just love talking about it, <laughs> I never hesitate to try talking about Rush, um, Although I still don't have, like, I don't even have a physical copy of Snakes and Arrows. <laughs> and there's some vinyl I still need. I don't, I have most of it. But, um, uh, yeah, I, 300, I was going to just, I guess I could talk about this now. I mean, what I'm going to do, I got these doubles. I got a bunch of records that I have doubles here that I've, that I, when I was going through my vinyl collection, um, back in the, whatever, was late summer. You know, stuff that I might give away for a contest. I don't know if I should do it for 300. I mean, 300 was an accomplishment for me. I think I hit 200, I want to say, in 2020 or 2021. So, um, hopefully, you know, <laughs> the milestone subscriber numbers could go up. I'm doing what I can. I, I'm trying to promote the channel. I'm trying to do whatever I can. But I would just say that I did launch the channel. I started the channel as an extension of my blog back in 2014. So... It was like March of, I didn't get the exact date. It was March of 2014. So the kind of saving is an announcement, but I could just say since it's the 300 subscriber, actually Dean, Dean, Dean Wolf, thank him for subscribing. He, he was number 300, I believe. That I want to, I, I might, you know, I want to just sort of reflect and talk about what I like about doing the channel, what I might want to do for future with the channel and what I might do otherwise. Because um, when you do something for 10 years and you see certain, amounts of accomplishments or you know part of it is just and i thought when i launched my youtube channel that because i had a, over a million hits on i eventually i was close to a million hits back in 2014 eventually i reached a million hits on the blog which has started in 2000 late 2006 that at least percentage of people would find the youtube channel and i was sharing the videos of course when i first started doing it. i didn't make videos that often but i made them enough and um 
it didn't really happen that much. So, you know, YouTube is different than Blogger. And so that's the, that's why I had the blog spot in my name and stuff. But it is. And um, so that's why I kind of was reflecting. It's like, well, should I continue to do this? And I'm, I'm enjoying, especially over the last couple of years, the last year and a half, two years, enjoying doing it more. But it is a labor of love and it is time consuming still. So... I don't know. I'm see. I hit the ten year mark in March. I'll come up with some more conclusions. But I mean, I want to do this album of the year series and finish it up. I just did 1977. I'm working on 78 right now, and um, you know, hopefully, do the whole thing. It's sort of as at least as a <laughs> someday I may do it again if I have the time. But um, thank you for watching. If you're enjoying those the series, I'm not trying to make the videos so long enough, but that's just my habit. But um, so that's kind of the little announcement and you know I might I might do a, a giveaway of some kind I don't know uh, at 300 it's now 300 I might do it at I might do it soon or I might wait till maybe what I'll do is I'll do the, the contest starting at the 10 year mark that might be the thing is I can sort of figure out the contest and then make an announcement ahead of time so so the larger other part the larger the other part about this video is a couple of things that I picked up in one review so two other pieces I have picked up I just got in the last few weeks First off, the Deer Hunter put out the second part of Act 2 graphic novel, which I have not read yet, but you can see. I mean, Act 2, of course, is, you know, I have Act 1 right here. And it's a great, you know, graphic novel, you know, story of Act 1 of the Deer Hunter, the, the Hunter saga, you know, Lake South, the River of the North. I have the first part of Act 2 somewhere. I need to still find it. I remember when I got it. But um, anyway, when I, I guess when I get around to reading through this, it won't take me that long. I'll maybe do it sometime in a few days. I'll follow up as a review. So the other uh, more recent purchase of some kind I picked up was um, Lorenzo Barbogli. Lorenzo from AltProg Core, who has altprogcore.blogspot.com. And he actually does have a YouTube channel, which he's been... He's mostly played, like, cover songs and stuff. He's a musician. Like, I'm a musician, but, you know, he's probably a better musician than me. But he's a massive Kevin Gilbert fan, among other stuff. He loves the Deer Hunter. He loves this sort of progressive art rock stuff that I do. And um, But given he loves Kevin Gilbert, he's written books. He won one or two on, Kevin, on Genesis and Prague history and that kind of thing. And he loves Kevin Gilbert. He did this. But they're always in Italian because he's from Italy, Lorenzo from Alt Prog Core, but he wrote this book in 2016 and he updated it. He finally got it translated into English. And it's, you know, it's it's basically not, I, I've read through only a little bit of it because I was reading this other book recently. I've been waiting to finish that, but it's a pretty good, you know, in terms of detail history of Kevin Gilbert. And again, it does include some stuff on Call Me Kai, so it's somewhat updated because originally he published it in 2016, but, um, you know, if you want to know more about Kevin Gilbert, you're a Kevin Gilbert fan. I think it's kind of, I'm going to say it's, it's mandatory, but it makes sense to, to look at it. It wasn't a lot of money. Um, but anyway, so yeah, I'll have to, maybe I'll do is I'll read both these two in the next few weeks, hopefully, um, and then do a review of them. So, so the last piece, I guess, for this video is the review. I did finally finish the Daniel Klaus book, Monica, which I got. It came out, I want to say it was early October. It's about two months ago. Um, Daniel Klaus, you know, the author, artist of the the, the, the acclaimed novel Ghost World, which is an all-time favorite of mine, my favorite, basically, graphic novel and movie. Um, also, you know, David Boring and Wilson, which was adapted into a film and um, Art School Confidential. Uh, but he's very kind of leftist-center, very counterculture, very opinionated, very social-politically opinionated. So, um... So, you know, his last book, I mean, I'm blanking, I should know the name of it, I thought was good, but I don't remember that much about it. Uh, Wilson I always liked, that was the most recent. He did a book called Ice Age. He's, I've got the whole collection. I think I did one video where I showed everything from him, but I could go for revisiting that or doing a follow-up. But this book, though, Monica, it's only like a hundred and... It's like a hundred and five pages. So it's not that long. It's, it's a graphic novel. Um, it's a story about... Obviously, a, a female, a, a girl, you know, obviously later a woman named Monica in, in a lot of ways. But it also is sort of some other kind of the world, sort of the observational world, some characters that she meets. Um, her mother, Penny, like, has some some 
issues with her relationships with men, basically. One of her, like her husband, I believe it is, was off at war. And then she's seen some other guys at the beginning of the, of the book. But then later, later she ends up, you know, obviously having the kid. But then probably about almost the middle of the book, she ends up um, t leaving the kid off to their Monica to her grandparents. And then you find out not that long after that, the grandparents are gone and the, the Monica is having to figure out a lot of her past. Invest a little bit like my girl investigate where your past where your parents came from because they're, they're, monica wasn't giving them much information the latter half focuses largely on this cult that monica believes her mother penny was part of or recruited part of and her father um which isn't exactly you know what happens when you find out some of the, the truth about it and then you know she meets she eventually finds her biological father too so i'm sort of spoiling a little bit with it but um there's some fantasy elements and sci-fi elements to it. Um, and again, some of it is not... The chapters are kind of... I could like show the chapters. It's not a... It is in chronological order for the most part. You can see the titles. Every chapter isn't about Monica, though. There's one chapter about a guy who goes back to his hometown and finds the hometown, like, basically, you know, almost deserted. And there's a bunch of, like sort of cultish alien race there that was there. That that one, I, I don't think we ever fully got resolution. I have to read it again on what happened. He eventually leaves the hometown, the, the guy. Um, and, you know, what Monica discovers with her mother and, you know, as she gets older into her, like, you know, past middle age, um, you know, she kind of comes to grips with her life. I guess that's the best way to put it. But, um yeah, it's there's there's a lot of fantasy and cultish elements to it, although it's less sort of pop culture driven than some of Daniel Klaus's work, which is why you know Brian K. Vaughn does that more. I love Brian K. Vaughn. Brian K. Vaughn was sort of a decide like like took the baton from Daniel. Daniel Klaus kind of took the baton from our crumb, so it's like the lineage. But um, but yeah, I mean, if you like Daniel Klaus, it's no brainer. You should get it and check it out. If you've never even if you don't like Ghost World, I mean, it's if you like graphic novels that aren't so based on superheroes and you know that kind of villain superhero thing, it's um, but it's still not purely like you know mundane polit political uh, opinions and it's not satire. It's like dry humor at points, but um, but the Monica character is definitely she's she's a little more. Um, like, compared to some of the characters in her... The, the closest comparison to this book would be David Boring, from my memory of his of his works, where it's one character trying to figure out something's not perfectly clear here. It's like a mystery, basically. It's an adventure mystery of sorts. Um, I mean, she's not a saint, but at the same time, you empathize with her. But I, at some point, I'm sort of like... Like, her mother, they created this... Um, store called Monocle's Candles, then she inherits it, but then they don't really explain, I mean, it, it went by in like two pages, so some some of the pacing of it is a little, like one time through, it's almost like listening to an album or something, or watching a movie that you have to analyze, like Stick to New York. You, I really probably need to read it again to sort of understand the linear, you know, process a little bit better than I just going through it. When I read it in fragments, because I, whenever I had time to kill and stuff, so... But and it's not a long book. Of course, it's a graphic novel. This isn't just a normal book. But so anyway, that's my at least, you know, somewhat detailed review of the new Daniel Klaus book, Monica. So thank you for watching again. Thank you for subscribing recently. Uh, but if you you have not subscribed, please subscribe. Um, I will be looking to make my albums of the year, 2023 list sometime in the next week and change. It could be by the end of the week, maybe. I don't know where it'll be next week. If not then. And at some point, then I'm going to resume. If not, I may find a time to start doing the 2020, doing the, the Albums of the Year series in 1978. I don't know. I'm not sure the, the exact order. It's a matter of what takes the most, or what's the most time friendly. And then uh, I can say this 78 and 79 are not, ex at least at this point, ex as extensive as like the years that, like 77, 76, if I were was going 30 some odd minutes, you know, having 30. 30 to 40 albums, so, which I can sort of say the same about 2023, which I used to have a, a long pattern of 50 albums every year, but, um, not that many, just because I've just been picking my spots and I just haven't had time to listen to as much new music as I usually, but anyway, again, thank you for watching, again, please subscribe if you haven't subscribed, and we'll see you next time.